The Church celebrates with great joy the Feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, two of the Apostles of the Lord Jesus who did tremendous work in their life at leading people to Christ. St. Peter was made an Apostle quite early on when Jesus told him to be a fisher of men and called him to be the leader of the Church, the first Pope. And St. Paul became an Apostle when Jesus appeared to him mystically and spoke to him and set him upon his life's work at leading people to Christ. When I was a little kid and I used to go to church in the creed, I would say, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And that word apostolic, I had no idea what it meant. I thought it meant something to do with apples. I thought the church was apostolic and that if you ate apples, somehow you'd be closer to the Lord. Well, I had no idea what that word meant, but it has to do with apostles, the apostles of Jesus. It means that the church is built upon the apostles by Jesus. And what are the apostles? Well, the apostles, the word apostle means someone who is sent by Christ. So the apostles were chosen and sent by Christ for a mission, a specific mission to lead all of humanity to the Lord Jesus, to lead people to be baptized, to lead people to Holy Communion in the Eucharist, and to lead people to follow the commandments of God and His Son Jesus, the Gospel. The Apostles are very important, St. Peter and St. Paul especially today. Not only because Christ chose and sent them, that's enough to give them their great import, but they are our historical link to the Incarnation. Now the Incarnation is the word that we use to describe God becoming one of us. St. John says in his Gospel, that the Word of God became flesh. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. God became one of us. That's amazing because before God created anything, there was no such thing as time. God is above history. He's absolutely transcendent and majestic. And yet in the Incarnation, God Himself enters into human history, becomes, as it were, a wayfarer, a divine wayfarer throughout human history. And He comes to lead us to the eternal kingdom of heaven. The Apostles are our historical link to the Incarnation. They really lived in this timeline and served the Lord Jesus. Several years ago, I went on a pilgrimage to Rome and I went to a basilica dedicated to St. Paul and one to, dedicated to St. Peter's and I was able to pray at the tombs of these two great Apostles. And I remember when I prayed at their tombs, I felt in my heart that, wow, these saints actually knew Jesus. Um, Saint Paul knew him from that mystical encounter, although he probably saw Jesus before at some point. And Saint Peter knew him personally. Saint Peter saw him work miracles and heard his awesome teaching and witnessed his new life in the resurrection after his crucifixion and burial. They actually knew the Lord Jesus. St. Peter is appointed by Christ to be head of the Church. Now, what kind of man was St. Peter? Well, probably above all, most importantly we could say, he was a poor fisherman. That's what he did for a living. He was therefore a very tough man. In order to be a fisherman, you have to be a tough man, not only for the hard and strenuous and even dangerous daily labor that is your daily existence, but also sometimes to deal with other fishermen. St. Peter was a fisherman not to raise money for his own comfort, but to survive, to feed himself, his family, and his friends. He had to be a very tough man, not a very refined man, a typical laborer. And Christ chooses him to become the leader of the church. Now, St. Peter was not an intellectual. His expertise was fishing and boats and things like that. Christ calls him, makes him the leader of the church. On his journey in life, Peter struggles against his own sins and against his own fears. One time when he saw the Lord Jesus and realized how powerful and awesome that Jesus is, St. Peter said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. He knew how grave his own sins were. But Jesus wouldn't listen to that. He didn't let the devil's blackmail uh, destroy Peter's mission. And he told Peter to become a fisher of men and to lead the church. Then, when Jesus was moving towards the cross, his suffering, his death, his passion, Peter gives in to fear and he denies knowing Jesus three times. 
In the Gospel of St. John, near the end, after the resurrection, Jesus appears to Peter and speaks to him and asks him three times, Do you love me? And Peter says, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. You know everything. You know that I love you. In that way, he repented of his three denials of knowing Jesus. So, Peter struggled against his own sins and fears. But after the resurrection, Peter changes. He now is equipped with absolute trust in the Lord Jesus. He now has the ability to lay down his life for Christ with no fear. He knows for sure that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Christ is all-powerful, stronger than the devil, sin, and death, more real than anything, that Jesus is with him. Now, St. Paul was a bit different than St. Peter. His name originally was Saul, and he was devoutly religious. He belonged to a group called the Pharisees, who were the same group who persecuted Jesus and wanted him dead. He opposed the existence of this new religion of people following Christ. Saul knew the scriptures up one side and down the other. He knew the Old Testament. That was the Bible that he had, was the Old Testament. And he was a theological expert. But the thing is, he really did not know God. And he would later admit to this that he was actually not in the light. He really did not love the Lord. Now that's interesting. Someone can be a scholar of the Bible, a theological expert, they can have all these degrees in theology, but that says nothing about their personal relationship to the Lord Jesus. It doesn't say anything. And Saul was far from God. Religiously, he was just as lost as the Pharisees and scribes who were opposed to Jesus. And eventually Saul wants to try to destroy the church that Christ has established. He's there when St. Stephen is stoned to death and Saul approves of his killing. And Saul, the Bible says, used to breathe murderous threats against the Christians. Now not only was Saul a scholar, but he also knew how to survive in this world. He had a kind of toughness to him, most likely. He became a tent maker, which means he knew how to live in a homeless situation. In one of his writings, he says how he knows how to be poor, how to be rich, how to go through the difficulties in this world. So, he's a survivor. In his letter to the Ephesians, he speaks in athletic and even military terms. One could discern that he had some connection to these spheres of human activity. Like St. Peter, St. Paul knew how to survive in difficult circumstances. He really did. He wasn't someone who allowed his circumstances to destroy him. He always tried to live as a leader. He's not going to be dominated by his circumstances. He's going to fight his way through life. Well, when Christ from heaven speaks to Saul, 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 why are you persecuting me? He changes. Like St. Peter, St. Paul gives his, his life entirely to Jesus Christ. He totally accepts Jesus as his Lord and Savior and sees that serving him is his life's greatest greatness. Now the personal backgrounds of Saints Peter and Paul will actually help them to endure all sorts of hardships for the gospel. Saint Peter has to be a tough man to be a fisherman. Saint Paul knows how to fight his way through life. And these two men will fight many battles for the Lord Jesus. They did not take up a comfortable life when they became servants of the Lord Jesus. They became opposed, indeed, people became their enemies simply because they loved the Lord Jesus and wanted to live in a way pleasing to Him and spoke the gospel boldly, as we all must. For St. Peter and Paul, they will endure hardship for Christ because for them, Christ is everything. They now understand that the only way to truly live the only way to live life to the fullest is to live in Christ, to live in His grace and by His truth. And these apostles worked very hard to lead people to Christ. That was their mission. They wanted to lead people to Jesus Christ, to friendship with Him. In their efforts to build up the church, they don't just want to build up some ambigu ambiguous community, but they want to lead people to friendship with Christ. That's important today because, you know, sometimes you read a parish mission statement and you get the impression that, is this a Catholic organization or not? There'll be no mention of the sacraments or prayer or conversion or Christ Himself. The, the Apostles Peter and Paul 
teach us that every parish, every Catholic's mission, every organizational church has the mission of le leading people to the Lord Jesus, leading people to conversion, to repent of their sins, to want, lead people to want to live for Christ now and always. That's what these apostles did. For them, the church is a community of people rooted in Jesus Christ, who daily want to praise and worship Him and do His will in all things. Now, there are many lessons that we can learn from these two apostles, and I want to share with you two of them that I think are helpful to us right now in our life. First one is this. The mystery of salvation in Jesus Christ was lived and served by these two real men. These two real men who lived and suffered through the hardships of this life really lived for Christ. Our belief in Christ is not based on something imaginary, but it's based on reality. I remember when I was in Rome for this pilgrimage to the tombs of St. Peter and St. Paul. In my heart, I said, it's all real. Everything that I've given myself to in the priesthood, everything I proclaim, everything that the church teaches, it's all real. Jesus Christ is Lord, and His mission of salvation is real. That's something that I think should encourage us in our faith. Secondly, Saints Peter and Paul, their lives and their missions was to make sure that we really love the Lord Jesus, that we actually see that Christ is our master at all times and in all things. Sometimes when I come to some great difficulty or challenge in my life, what I do is I take out this little card and it has on it the Apostles' Creed. And that's the creed we say at the beginning of the Rosary. And some people say it was written by the Apostles themselves. It's a brief summary of reality. And I read that creed and I let it remind me, I read it prayerfully, and I let it remind me that this is reality, that God is our Father, that Jesus is His divine Son and is our Lord and Savior. He suffered, died to save us from sin and from death and from the devil, and He rose again in the resurrection, that the Holy Spirit is our sanctifier and our evangelizer, and that the Church is what Christ established. And that helps me to live whatever difficulty I'm going through as a servant of Christ to see that even now in the face of whatever hardship I'm facing, Christ is my teacher and my Lord and my Master. St. Peter and St. Paul help us to make sure that we live, we speak, and we act and think in a way that is truly Christian. That we experience everything in life as disciples of the Lord Jesus. That we experience life, suffering, persecution, temptation, and death as disciples of Christ. You know something, whether you believe in God or not, whether you serve Him or not, or seek to do His will or not, you experience life, suffering, maybe persecutions for some things, temptation to sin, and death. So, St. Peter and Paul want us to experience these things as disciples of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine what they must have felt in their hearts upon their death. St. Peter was crucified upside down. St. Paul was beheaded by a sword. Were they fearful men? Did they experience evil and corruption, lies, jealousy, and death as faithless men who are divorced from divine providence? No, they experienced it as disciples of Christ. Therefore, they felt that they were on the winning team, that even if the whole world, motivated usually by envy, is against them, then they have nothing to fear. Jesus Christ is with them. When I left the tombs of St. Peter and St. Paul, it confirmed me in my faith. I remember when I prayed at the tomb of St. Paul, I prayed that he would share with me his gift of preaching. And I was confirmed in the faith that was handed on to me through, by generations before me. I was confirmed in the belief that Jesus Christ is Lord, that He's Lord right now, all-powerful, that the Catholic Church is founded by Christ on the Apostles. It really is. Whenever we have some confusions or controversies in the Church, scandals, we got to go back to truth. 
the church is established by Christ, founded on the apostles, and our response to all problems in the church is to enter more deeply into reality, to live as Christ's people more and more seriously. I was confirmed in the faith that, the church, that what the church teaches in the catechism of the Catholic Church is true and that I will live and every one of us will live life to the fullest to the degree that we live in Christ. And I came home from that pilgrimage renewed. I really felt a oneness with the Apostles St. Peter and St. Paul. Dear brothers and sisters, not only are St. Peter and St. Paul good, ro good role models for us in our relationship to God, but they really are our spiritual friends as they live in the communion of the saints in heaven. If you ever struggle with believing in the Lord Jesus, if you ever struggle with faith, ask St. Peter and St. Paul to intercede for you and to help you to believe as they believed. For them, their faith was not just a belief, but it was reality. And let their writings in the New Testament inspire you to strive to walk on the way of the Lord Jesus Christ.